Hello and welcome to the CGTN newsroom, where in recent months and indeed recent years, we've been following the Brexit debate and closely reporting on it too. Since the EU referendum in July 2016, Brexit has become one of the hottest topics on social media, especially on Twitter. Along with the help of social media intelligence platform Digimind, we've been analysing some of those conversations around Brexit for you. Let's take a look at them then. First things first, what have people been saying? Well, the hashtag Brexit has become one of the most popular popular on social media in recent years. The first charts we'll look at will show how many times people have used the hashtag each month over the past two years. You can see a dip as the UK went into an election campaign, but then a huge surge after Boris Johnson came to power, promising Brexit means Brexit. Later in the year, there is a lull as both sides engaged in technical negotiations before the 11th hour deal was agreed and Brexit was completed. We can zoom in a little to focus just on the first months of this year. You can see a gradual decline punctuated by some smaller peaks where British fishermen spoke out about issues facing their industry and the row broke out with the EU over vaccine exports. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Brexit wasn't the only thing people were talking about on social media. The COVID-19 pandemic dominated global headlines. Let's take a closer look at how Brexit compared to COVID online. As you can see, around the time the World Health Organization announced that COVID-19 was a pandemic in January 2020, the Brexit conversation on social media plummeted. Overall, the conversation probably reflects the reality in most people's lives. During the last year, the impact of coronavirus has dwarfed that from Brexit. Now, Brexit is a broad topic, obviously, but people were talking about lots of different things related to the issue. The next charts we'll look at show some of the key concepts that our research picked up. The first thing that jumps out is Brexit deal. As mentioned, there was a lot of uncertainty around whether a deal would be reached at the last minute, and that's had individuals and businesses on both sides worried about how they'd be impacted by the arrangement. That moves us nicely onto another concept, Brexit's reality, and its impact, as we've been hearing in the show, still very much being felt on both sides. You'll also see COVID and Scotland, where the debate over Brexit has become tied up in questions over whether the country should break away from the rest of the United Kingdom. Finally, I'd just flag up rejoin EU, another popular term that's pretty self-explanatory and certainly reflects a popular view on social media. Now let's take a closer look at the types of people discussing it and who cares most about Brexit. The Brexit conversation on Twitter has been primarily driven by men. When it comes to occupation, teachers, business professionals, pensioners and those who represent creative industries talk about Brexit the most, but it is an issue that seems broad-based. Let's talk to one of the people who's been part of the conversation. Matt Oxley is a sports journalist who travels a lot to the European Union for work. Let's find out why he took to a public platform to speak out about the issue. I'm going to see if we can speak to him now. So Matt, how has Brexit impacted you? I think in any kind of performing industry, whether it's the music industry, motorbike racing, cycle racing, anything like that, when you're moving people into and, and equipment into and out of the EU, it's going to have an effect because there's no longer freedom of movement and, and everything has to be checked. Um, you know, at the moment, we're allowing stuff into Britain without many checks, but stuff's getting checked into. So it's, it's going to have a, a massive impact, I think, sadly. Um, you know, some of us were warning this all the time for years, but here we are, you know. Your tweet went viral. Were you surprised by the response? Most people were agreeing. I mean, you know, a few years ago, if I tweeted something like that, I'd get lots of people saying, oh, it's Project Fear, it's going to be fine. They need us more than we need them and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, I don't think so. And, and, and here we are, you know, uh, everything is happening as, as the Project Fear people uh, predicted. Um, and, and I find many, many more people now saying, yep, yeah, you're right. What have we done? And social media has played a big part in the Brexit debate. What are your thoughts on that? It plays a big role in everything now, doesn't it? It's, a, it's an echo chamber, you know, like, like anything. It's a, it's, a, it's a technology, so it's amoral, isn't it? You know, it can be used for good or for bad. And I, I think social media exaggerates every situation. You know, it, it, it can't help but do that because it allows people with no expertise to have a voice, you know, and if they manage to, you know, if they manage to say something that, that goes viral, even though they may have no expertise in the subject they're discussing, their voice becomes very important and might influence a lot of other people. 
Matt, thank you very much for talking to us. So Matt's based in the United Kingdom, but this isn't just a conversation confined to the UK. All across Europe, people have been talking about Brexit, particularly in those countries that have a strong trade relationship with the UK. Let's have a look at some of them. Unsurprisingly, the Brexit discussion on social media is mainly dominated by the UK. France, the UK's closest continental neighbour, came in second, but the topic was almost 20 times less popular there. You can see other big European countries also feature lower down the list. Last but not least, who needs words when you can use emojis? Now, Brexit has been a very emotionally charged subject. Let's take a closer look at some of the most popular emojis people have been using to express their feelings on the issue. Bang in the middle, as you can see, is the EU flag. The Union flag is another popular emoji, particularly among those who support Brexit. For some, it's emerged as a symbol of independence, but others have been using it alongside the EU flag as a sign of the recent history shared between the two. The Scottish flag is there too, and reflecting the emotions within this debate, the laughing face emoji and the angry face too. Well, as you've been hearing, social media offering a very mixed view of Brexit with strong positions on both sides of the debate. In the final part of today's show, my colleague Juliet Mann will be looking at the hard facts around the impact of Brexit. Juliet.